Hey, y'all. Hey, welcome to Word on the Curve podcast. My name is Annette, and I am your host here tonight at Word on the Curve podcast. You can see us on YouTube at Word on the Curve podcast studios and here on Facebook at the Black Girls Locker Room and Word on the Curve podcast. Please join us. I'd like to uh, first acknowledge some people today. My daughters, first of all, two of my greatest cheerleaders and my biggest joys. And then I have a grandson who is the person I like most in the world. And for those of you who are grandparents, you understand exactly what I'm saying. So welcome here tonight. I am happy to have you back. I'd like to uh, acknowledge small business owners and thank you for the work that you do in our communities. And I'd like to ask more of the potential business owners to get up on their game, get in our community and own some things, houses, businesses, you know, Everybody except us owns our communities. That ain't right. Do something about it. And the only way to do something about it sometimes is you have to come together and work with other people to ensure, you know, that we all have a road in. I am going to be working with some folks soon on a mobile hair store. That's right. Myself and three other people. Hydrate. Water's good for the brain. At least what's left of mine. Fruit. Moisturize your feet, hands, face, and mind your business. Welcome to Word on the Curve podcast. I'd like to thank my producers, Frank and Christina Sasso. Tonight, we're talking about why I'm a flight risk. And I'm going to remind you again, this is my experience, strength, and hope. What doesn't apply, let it fly. Get in where you fit in and stay conscious. Conscious. Why well, I'm a flight risk. So let's talk about this and put it into perspective because I don't mean this literally. And some folks, you know, wrote in and asked me uh, if I did. No, I don't mean it literally. I mean that I'm a flight risk in that, you know, I board and ride a, rise above as soon as the need presents itself. Rise above what? All of the bull shifts. I use that word loosely, shifts. Life is short. And it, to get caught up in other people's bullshifts, I don't have enough time for it. I just don't. I have more time behind me than I have in front of me. I don't have enough time for it. I have enough of my own shifts. I do. I really do. So listen, mark me absent because I'm not coming. That's right. I'm a flight risk. And here are some situations about uh, what a flight risk means for me. You know, some people, toxic and otherwise, have a tendency of making you feel drained and diminished, right? That you have, after dealing with them, you have less physical and mental uh, energy after dealing with them, right? Um, not more. Toxic people don't give you more. They take and you get less. Less in terms of good energy, good feelings, confidence, um, feeling, uh, you know, pumped up, right? They also have a profound sense. Now, li listen, this is important a profound effect on your sense of self. When you hang around negative, toxic people, they drain you. Look, word on the curve is there's plenty of them out there. There's plenty of them out there. Hey, McLeish, nice to have you here tonight. There's plenty of toxic people out there. Avoid them, baby. Be a flight risk in those situations. That's right, be a flight risk. 
get out of Dodge. Don't take shorts, you know, because, you know, toxic people, places and things will impact your sense of self. You know, leaving you sometimes just feeling so demoralized, you know, when, when you're around people who are just draining, they leave you feeling demoralized, you know, unconfident, unsteady, and unappreciated. And you're, you know, you'll start thinking it's you. Oh, it's me. I wonder what's going on with me. What's going on with you is that you're hanging around people who are draining you. Be a flight risk, baby. It's okay. Get away from that. Family, friends, business partners, mm-hmm, co-workers, I don't care who it is. If they're draining you, and word on the curb is, we're pretty drained out here today, right? Get away from that. And look, pick up on this vibe, you know, a vibe called grateful. Pick up on that. Be appreciative of the things you have. Look at the things you've done. Focus on yourself. Don't focus on people who are focusing on other people, places, and things. Because they don't have your best interest at heart. And they are going to rob you of your peace. I know that some of you have, uh, you know, people who have done just that, robbed you of your peace. And again, I said, I don't care if it's family, friend, or foe. I said that, right? Doesn't mean that they're not your family. It means that you don't have to be drained by them, baby. Take flight. I don't care who it is. You know, there are things that toxic people do that. Uh, make us question ourselves. And anytime you have to question yourself or it robs you of your peace, it's too expensive. Why are you spending so much uh, of your good energy on people who don't mean you any good? And check this out. I know a few people that every time they sit down, they're talking about somebody else. But you know why people do that? It doesn't have anything to do with the people they're talking about. It has to do with the fact that as long as folks can talk about other people and bring them down, they don't have to focus on themselves. Because if they took a look at themselves, that girl, that woman, that man that they're dogging because their partner's in the street, their partner's in the street too. So instead of focusing on that, they focus on you and others mm -hmm. and me. Stop being so impacted by them. Accept them as your fan club and treat them accordingly. And by that, I mean, what well, doesn't apply, you know, let it fly. Because I know everybody out here has been in a situation where you've been dusted by somebody else's poison. Right? Where somebody said, did, or uh, made moves that impacted you. You know, I had a woman who used to say horrible things about me, a few of them actually. They were my biggest fans, but they used to say horrible things about me. And now one of them looks, listens, and wants to be a part of my life as if those things never happened. Avoid people who keep you guessing about who they are and where they're going to be from one day to the next, right? Check this out. When you're dealing with people on a regular basis and you don't know whether they're going to be good today, bad today, happy, sad, friendly, angry, confused, combative, that's a toxic environment. Be a flight risk in that situation. I promise you, once you learn to remove yourself from the complainers, the, you know, the toxic people, the people that you don't know who they're going to be from one minute to the next, you're going to be a lot better. That's right. You're going to be a whole lot better. I promise you. I'm giving you my experience, strength, and hope. You know those people who do things, grimy things, and you think they're your friends, and they do things, and then they never apologize? This particular woman, who's pretty prominent in these parts, did everything she could to destroy me, and now thinks it's okay to just laugh, talk, like, uh, share, Hello, how you doing? As if she didn't do anything, right? And what I learned from that is it was her own sickness, her own insecurities. Yeah, I'm talking about you, B. 
the first name it begins with a B. Okay? And then there might be some other letters at the end of the alphabet that are her initials. I'm talking about you. Um, they never apologize. They do things and then quote scripture thinking that that's made them better. You know, God has forgiven you. I haven't forgotten and neither has he. Am I mad? No, I'm happy because I learned some things from you. And the biggest thing I learned from this person was how not to be like them. So those people who never apologize, you know, they'll lie before they apologize. You know, uh, they'll throw paint on your car and you'll see the paint all over their hands and they'll say, I didn't do that. I was walking past and I just touched it because I didn't know what it was. They'll lie before they'll, they will apologize, right? Take flight, be a flight risk, get away from them and stay away from them. I won't even sit in the same church with them. That's how serious I am about it, okay? Because uh, demonic spirits will attack you anywhere. So be mindful of that, right? Be a flight risk. When people say, oh, I never see you around anymore, that's intentional. I don't want to be around the people, places, and things that are doing things that bring me harm or bring other people harm on a regular basis. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. So I'm a flight risk, baby. Consider me one. You know, play me short. I'm a flight risk. Disrespect me. I'm a flight risk. I'm not arguing and I'm not going back and forth. I'm a flight risk. I am. And I know I am. And I make that clear to everybody up front. You know, you know, lanes, playing games, I'm a flight risk, right? I know who I am. I know where I've been. I know where I'm going and I know what I want. That's right. I do. I'm pretty, pretty comfortable with me. I like the person that I've grown into and I had a lot of growing to do and I'm still growing and I'm still learning. I'll grow and learn until the day I die. But baby, I don't have any problem pulling up that boarding pass and getting out of Dodge, right? I never, never switch up. I switch lanes. I'm not driving into a brick wall. I'm not going to be in a situation that I have to prove that I'm a good person. I'm a good person and I'm not going to spend any time trying to prove it. I am. That's right. I'm not a perfect person. I'm flawed. Seriously flawed in a lot of areas but I'm a good person and I don't have to prove it. I'm not going to change to fit in. Y'all are circles. I'm a square. I like being a square in a room full of circles. I'm not going to fit in. That doesn't mean I'm not going to get in where I fit in, but I'm not going to change to fit in. I'm not sawing off my edges. I'm not trying to shape myself to what you like or what you think I should be. I'm never going to do that. And when it gets hot and heavy and dysfunctional, family, friends, uh, foe, co-workers, business partners, I'm boarding. I'm definitely boarding, you know. You ever had those people in your life who show up when you're in a crisis? They'll show up when things are going bad for you. They'll show up when you're suffering. They'll show up. But when you're doing well, there's never any rub on the shoulder. There's never any pat on the back. Mm-hmm. Yep. They'll find reasons why your good news isn't great news. Yeah. They're around when you're doing bad, though. Because then they can watch you. Yep. You know, you ever have been around people or new people or been in situations where you're having uh, some conversation that everybody may not agree with, right? And your biggest fan in the room, your enemy, right? Will make it about how you said it, 
but not what you said. Because they're trying to find a reason and a way out of avoiding the conversation and the things they don't like. So it's not going to be about what you said. It's going to be something like this. Peep this as I quench my parched throat. Hold on. They're not going to talk about what you said. For example, you let them hold your car and they crash it, right? It's just an example. And when you're talking to them about it, of course you're frustrated, right? But you're saying like, I thought you told me you were going to so-and-so and so-and-so. Oh, I don't like how you're talking to me. You crashed the car. I don't like how you're talking to me. It's not what you said. It's how you're saying it. They're avoiding dealing with the reality of the situation. Pull that board and pass out, baby, and take flight. It's okay to be a flight risk. And here's what I want you to know. I don't care who it is. When you're in a situation that you're uncomfortable, you're questioning yourself, your peace is at risk. Yeah, this is word on the curb, baby, because so many people have lost their peace trying to deal with other folks, what they believe, what they think, how they see it, instead of their self. Deal with yourself first, always. First and always deal with you. Look in the mirror first. But here's what I want you to know. When it comes time to be a flight risk, you better know how to identify your boundaries. And when those boundaries are crossed, and I don't care who it is, because see, the best thing you can do in the world is get comfortable with your boundaries, your boundaries, your boundaries. Once you know and respect yours, you'll know and respect others. I promise you, you will, because you'll know what boundaries look like, right? So stop letting people use that. It's not what you said to me because I didn't give you back the money I owed you when I said, you. yeah, I know it's been a year and I know I've been here, there and everywhere. And I know that I, you know, I get a new outfit every week. I just didn't have it, but it's not what you, it's not, it, it's not what you said. It's how you said it to me. You want your money. Yeah. I want my money. That's right. And if there was a smirk, a look, a sound of disgust, it's because that's what it is. It's been a year. You haven't paid me back. But you're doing everything else that works for you. And then you want to tell me it's not what I said. It's how I said it. Take that somewhere else. Go play in traffic. As a matter of fact, go play on a playground because uh, that's what you're doing. Child's play. When you owe people, pay them. When you owe them an apology, apologize. I'm sorry for whatever you think I did is not an apology. I'm sorry because I did A, B, C, D, and E is an apology. Admitting that you were wrong and why is an apology. An apology is not, I'm sorry that you felt that way. Excuse me. <coughs> allergies, I'm sorry. Bags and allergies, right? I'm sorry that you feel that way. It's not an apology. I'm sorry. I apologize for what I did that may have made you feel that way. Is don't be afraid to be a flight risk because you want people to know they run the risk of losing your company and your conversations when they get reckless with you. That's right. Don't let anybody get reckless with you. Love is not reckless. It's difficult, but it's not reckless. Now, if you love me, you would. Mm -mm. That's a boarding pass situation. Tonight, I want you to remember, and I want you to recognize when and where you are in boarding pass situations. Get your boarding pass, baby, and take flight. That's right. Take care of yourself and recognize, you know, uh, what brings you down. That's the word on the curve. Stay conscious. Recognize what brings you down. Get in where you fit in, but don't shave off you to fit in with anybody. 
anywhere at any time. And if you're feeling a little low and lonely, you know, because what you think is a popular group, you know, is talking about you, I want you to remember that your fan base will keep you relevant. You don't even have to come out the house. All you have to do is show your face here and there every, every now and then. And I promise you, they'll be your best marketing campaign. They will create stories about you that entertain even you. Don't get upset about it. Pull your board and pass out, baby, and get away from them and stay away from them. Stop trying to be around people who bring you down. And they're not as popular as you think they are. And just like many of us in many situations, um, uh, many occasions, they're one paycheck away from it too. Remember that. Social media is Hollywood. And in Hollywood, people get to create images of themselves. I saw one of my sorority sisters the other day and I said, hey, you look great. What are you doing? And she said, drinking water and minding my business. I love her. Give it a try. I promise you it's going to be one of the best things you've ever done. Other people's business ain't your business. Hold on to your own. Take care of yourself. And don't forget to keep your boarding pass handy. So that whenever you need to take flight, you need to become a flight risk, you're prepared to do so. Take care of yourself. That's important. Again, my name is Annette. I am your host here at Word on the Curve. Thank you for joining me for those who are in now and those who will come back later to see us. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you again. If you're interested in joining our podcast, hit us up at Word on the Curve the number 29 at gmail.com. We'd love to have you. Good night.